There we go. Okay, just go back again. Back here. And I tell you, I'm a chief of Razi. She's a chamois. It's a very strange, very difficult question. Hey, um, a chief of Razi. Who is the wife of the Yitzhar? Now, there is a Yitzhar, which is very prevalent among uh, people, which is the Yitzhar of competition. Right? The Yitzhar of competition is, uh, uh, is linked to ambition. And many people have ambition. Uh, uh, they, their ambition is to climb up on the bodies, so to speak, of the people that they, you know, leave by the wayside on their right, their rise to the top. So that's it's a real derivative of the Eight Sahara. If you have some such and sort of environment where you have to have an ambition which clashes with other people, there are also ambitions which we know of, which are just basically uh, uh, materialistic. And uh, perhaps they don't hurt other people, perhaps they do, but they uh, are all derived from the Eight Sahara. It's a tremendous drive which a person has. How are you supposed to deal with it? And so that's an interesting thing. He almost gives up on it, he says, which of course he's not going to do. <laughs> but he says, God, I'm going to do even we fight against it and we, and we vanquish it. Hello, Enzel Bamaseh. That means we're restraining ourselves in practice. But who can uh, conquer his heart that he should not have a desire? It's a very strange Ibn Ezra. In Parshas, uh, uh, in Parshas uh, Yisro, on uh, Sersa Dibros, he says uh, that uh, you know we have one of the one of the Ten Commandments is lo, lo sachlo, right? Not to desire it's something which belongs to your, uh, another person. And Shmuel says lo tachmo, and, and Dvarim says lo tisave. But uh, even as you ask, how can the Torah command you on emotions? The Torah can only command you, says Ibn Ezra. This is Ibn Ezra's premise. <coughs> it's, a, it's a very fascinating premise in and of itself. The Torah can't command you on emotions. It can only command you on actions. So how can all of a sudden here the Torah is commanding you on an emotion? How can the Torah tell you not to desire your neighbor's Rolls Royce? Right? You want it. Right? So uh, the Torah can tell you, don't act on it. Don't try and, and acquire it. Don't try and... and, and Take it from him. Don't even pressure him to sell it to you. But how can I tell you not to desire as well as voice? It's natural. It's human tendency, right? It's a, a perfect emotion. So even Ezra's answer is a very, very um, uh, difficult answer. It's uh, one which I uh, can't really fathom. I mean, I know what he says, but it's very difficult to accept. He says, no, we can answer like this. He says, he has a marshal. He says, you have a princess, a beautiful princess. But she's on an island surrounded by a river of fire. And since she's an island surrounded by a river of fire, it means you can't get her without dying in the process. Right? Because you're going to be burnt to death. So he says, that per person will have no desire for that princess. And since you have no desire for that princess, because it means death. And so too, a person should look at other person's property as being like behind this, the river of fire. And therefore, no matter what the other person's property <laughs> is, they have no desire for it. So again, the Sibin Ezra I found always very difficult, as I'm sure you do too, because of course you just want the princess. Just because she's behind a river of fire doesn't mean you don't want her. just means you realize it's not pra- practical to, to accomplish your taiva. So the... So the well, maybe that's the answer. The answer is that you're right. You can't get rid of your, your desire, but the way to fight your desire is to put a stumbling block in front of you. Oh. So then, but then Rev Dessa's question is a legitimate question because he's saying, uh, he, he, taking that premise, what he's really saying is that it's not possible to eradicate the Eight Sahara. Right. All you can do is make two big barriers around it. Right. So it doesn't, doesn't uh, you're not going to succumb to it. What Judaism all does, Gedarim, together, together, together. Right. So that's, that, uh, but the problem is like this. Uh, again, if the Ibn Ezra's problem, the Ibn Ezra, perhaps for him, it did resolve for him, but if the actual Isra for us is low Sach mode, you're not even supposed to desire <laughs> something that belongs to your friend. So even Ezra's answer doesn't give do us any good. I, I, he, I, I, he, he, the Torah is commanding us to change to, uh, about our emotion. And, that, and here too, the Torah is commanding us about our emotion not to have negative ambitions. Yes? I think what the Ibn Ezra is maybe sort of pointing towards is, 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 is a general perspective. Meaning, you should look at the situation. Yes, there's a pretty lady over there, but meaning... This makes it instantly oh, okay. It's, it's like the way I'm relating to it is yeah, that reality exists, but it's not. That's that's I don't I don't like I'm changing the way I feel about it based on the way I'm looking at it. Is that true? It could be. In that case, Playboy would never have sold any magazines. <laughs> no, it's true. It's like, <coughs> I 
Yeah, yeah. That that the reality is is that there is that drive, but if I'm looking at it in a certain way, that even though there is that drive, I have other drives that are competing against it that override that. Right. That I, you're right. That's what Ibn Ezra is saying. Meaning though, but okay. But so meaning, put things out I still want that though. Yeah. Yeah. So that is what he's right. saying. But the, the the question that we're asking is. How is that getting rid of your taiva? That maybe that's what he was saying. It's, it's, no, it's, it's the Bill commandment Manji is you should not have it. a taiva. That's the commandment. That's what it says. You should not have a taiva. So he asks, "Oh, how do you fight it? By by how do you get rid of your taiva? By putting a stumbling block of whatever sword you can. You could come up with any uh, any way you want to do it, but it's not getting rid of your taiva. That's we're, we're that's trying saying to like change I, it from a can. reality to a fantasy. But the point is, you shouldn't have the fantasy. Right. You can't. It's it's human nature. That's what we're how we're wired. That's how we're asking. Yeah. So then, it's how a, does that answer his question? By saying, put a, you should look at that princess as if there's a fire surrounding her. That doesn't answer the question. I still have a desire for her. I'm not gonna be stupid enough to go kill myself to go get her. But I still have a desire. Desire still there. So how does that answer the question? And now that I may, I probably would daydream about how to circumvent the fire. Yeah, that would spend right. a lot of time. It's like a bag of shiny. Or, or so the fire is not down. down. Oh, it's not so bad. That's how no mechs was. I mean, that's how no mechs was. The fire, fire, the fire, the truck, the ladder. Okay, so. Princess in the castle. So the question is, what is whether of Desler writes here what even as it really meant? I don't think so, but maybe. Uh, and he does, of course, doesn't reference Ibn Ezra. But he says, stories, <laughs> They revealed the, the, how one person deals with this. But when they said, must be If you satisfy the Eight Sahara, it's hungry. If you, if you starve the Eight Sahara, it's satisfied. It tells you, the, the the true and tr- tried and true uh, remedy for uh, the illness of a bad uh, uh, ambition, Taivas Kochnatil, which is the desire which comes from the uh, quality, the power of taking, is to cure the hunger with the hunger itself. Okay, just give, give it a minute. Klalu, har evet yitzchavi badami mekka. Uh, uh, um, um, uh, famish your Yay Sahara and it's going to se- separate itself from you. But talk, it says, okay, but talk hell with truest with four of own zones and Sadiq. That's easy for a Sadiq, he says. Uh, he admits, it's not easy to tell people this. But it's Sadiq, it's easy. But Zachro, he remembers, Kilo Yisachdu Hanatila and Nasina Banatila. He remembers that uh, he can't unite giving and taking. As long as he doesn't separate himself from the power of taking altogether, lo yelling, no saying, he won't be a giver of loy bak and and he won't be like a kodesh baruch So yeah, you have a tzaddik. He says to himself, you know what? I, it's true. I, I I can have this ambition, but my whole essence, my whole fiber of my being is that I want to serve Hashem. I want to serve Hashem, and I want to be like Hashem. And therefore, that Sadiq was on a very high madrig, of course, is able to say, you know, I have no uh, ambition for this negative thing, and I'm not going to introduce this ambition. <laughs> and I'm not, and if I have one, I realize it goes against my entire raison d'etre, the entire reason why I'm alive. Okay, that's fine for Sadiq. It doesn't work so much for us, the rest of us. So what about the rest of us? Even so, he's not in madrig of Sadiq. He seemingly bo. This is what he has to do. He has to think. When he uh, when, when he's sick with the illness of taking, his life is not life. It's better for him to suffer a little bit of hunger. Or in order than ruining the, uh, uh, the, the 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 satisfaction of his life. Az takel harafua b'shava rapalo. So then, it because the the remedy becomes light, easier, and he's going to be able to heal himself. So I, 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 again, this also to me seems like a very high madrega. But he's saying that a, a, a person is able to intellectually separate their ambition from their values and ethics. And you can say a person could say to himself, you know what? If I pursue this ambition, it is, uh, uh, it's never going to end, and it's going to be detrimental to what I'm trying to become. 
and therefore I am not going to go after it. Now, this, uh, uh, this, uh, I'm going to use a, a muscle in order to explain this a little bit better, what I think he's saying. Uh, years ago, uh, I wrote an article for the Jewish Observer, which they did not publish in the for original format, uh, but, uh, because I based it on Pinocchio. And uh, Pinocchio was not, there was the term Pinocchio was not kosher enough for the Jewish Observer. I don't know where, where they draw the line, but they didn't want to do an article based on Pinocchio. They actually, I think one of the reasons they decided not to do it is they asked Mayor Stern, whether to do it, from to say, you know, Mayor Stern said, who's Pinocchio? Mm. His wife said, you don't know who Pinocchio was? <laughs> <laughs> but evidently, you know, that he didn't know. So the, uh, so Pinocchio is, the guy who's of Pinocchio is not the nose. Well, no, everybody thinks about the nose, it grows longer when he lies. That's not really the guy who's of Pinocchio. The guy who's of Pinocchio is Jiminy Cricket. Pinocchio has a Yetzer, Yetzer Hatov, which is outside of him. It's not internalized. Actually, the whole Pinocchio, the whole Mahalach, is to be able to internalize the Yetzer Atov. And that, the Pinocchio doesn't want to do that. And he wants, because he wants to remain immature. He wants to remain this uh, mischievous little boy. And uh, in this case, that means he's going to remain uh, made out of wood. And most, most kids, including myself through high school, are very similar. You know, Chazal say you only get Yetzer at home when you're 13 years old. What does that mean? You get Yetzer when you're both many good guinea kids are very good, good, even though they're under 13. So it uh, means that when you're under 13, all you, anything you do is based on emotion. And Yetzer it doesn't mean it's necessarily bad, it means you're emotional. Yetzer doesn't mean it's good, it means intellectual. So you saw what says. Sometimes it means literally, but a lot of times it doesn't. So a kid who's under 13, he might be learning through shots and posting. But it's, it's an emotional thing. He hasn't yet developed the independent objective thought to think about why this is a good thing to do. He, uh, he feels good. People make him feel good. He feels, he feels that this is something which makes it worthwhile, but it's feeling. It's, it's emotion. At the age of 13, a person begins to start being able to think of things objectively. And therefore, at that time, a person already can understand things and why things are, and what things should, why things should be a certain way, not other ways, and so on and so forth. So then a person can... But start beginning that Yetzer Tov, the intellectual in, in, in the, <coughs> independence and thoughtfulness. Now, again, as I said, through high school, what was my main goal in school? Not to get thrown out, right? Sometimes I succeeded, sometimes not. But the, uh, so the idea, I'm talking about thrown out of school. <laughs> thrown out of classroom is okay. <laughs> thrown out of school, you want to get thrown out of school. So th that is, so the way you measure yourself in that situation is, the prince, the Rebbe, the principal, the teacher, he is your Jiminy Cricket. And you want to leave him outside. Because if you take it inside, it's going to, you know, it's going to stare all your fun. Right? It's because it's going to have a conscience. Who wants to have a conscience? But I don't want to think of myself as a bad person. So how do I make that work? So I take an external uh, 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 frame of measure, which is the my Jiminy Cricket. And as long as I don't fire him and he doesn't fire me, we're okay. I must be okay. I'm still here. So the same as though that, therefore, as long as the menial doesn't kick me out, I'm okay. I must be okay. This uh, I, is a phenomenon which I think um, also, uh, not to get uh, overly political, but a little bit controversial. You know, if you have a, a shul, it's always amazing to me you have a shul of Baal who take, take a, a rub with white socks and a strimal and a becker shop who doesn't really have the same background as them, but doesn't really relate to them. Why do they do that? Because they <coughs> want to have the Yetzer Tov right up there. As long as they have that connection with the Yetzer Tov, represented by their Rebbe, or Rebbe, so then they're fine. It doesn't matter that they can offload the conscience on him and say, look, 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 I got this Rebbe, and he's, he's good, so I must be good too. So then, and no require, no, no, no demands on you. So the tr trick is, uh, or the difficulty is to flip that around. I know somebody who um, actually worked on this, uh, externalizing his Yetzer Hora and e internalizing Yetzer Tov. And what he did is he took his Yetzer Hora and he gave it a name. He called his Yetzer Hora Rembrandt, not, not the toothpaste. He called him Rembrandt because, <laughs> the, uh, the artist, the painter, yes. Because he said the Yetzer Hora paints beautiful pictures. And the Rav Dessler says, most people, and they don't say here, says elsewhere, most people associate themselves with the Yetzirah, 
and it's, and not the Yitzhak though. The Yitzhak is outside himself. And he says the evidence is you're you're on, you're, you're on a diet, right? And your internal battle is I want ice cream, and your Yitzhak Tov says you you shouldn't have the ice cream. The I wants the ice cream. The Yitzhak Tov is telling you you shouldn't have the ice cream. So that's some the the, uh, the Yitzhak Tov speaks to you. And you're the person, you're the anti which wants the ice cream. It's very Freudian, you know, the id, the and the ego, right? So there's the I'm the id, the ego is on the outside. So the um but the idea is uh, true, even though <laughs> Freud used it to a certain extent as well. So but the uh, so here too, what I think we're trying to say here, what that's trying to say is that uh, of course it's a hard avoda, but a person can intellectually come to the cognition. This is what I'm supposed to do. You know, this is Yisbar starts. Yisbar Adam You know what your obligation is, why you're here. And then, if you, if you start contemplating that, then the Yetzirah becomes more external to you. You become more connected to your Yetzirah and less connected to the Yetzirah. Again, if you're going to be a big tzaddik, you're going to be able to get the Yetzirah out of you completely. But even if you don't, and most of us won't, Myself included, but the, uh, the, nevertheless, we can identify more as our Yetzer Tov and understand this is what we should be, and sometimes that'll help us to be mariv ourselves in the sense that we won't follow that negative ambition or that taiva because we know that we're supposed to be good by our own internal standards. Does that make any sense? Okay. So well, the only question I have on that is that does that mean does that mean and not to put anybody down, but like. Does that mean that it's a bigger uh, accomplishment to have finished Shas after Bar Mitzvah? <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. So like, the, wow, this guy finished Shas when he was, okay? Yeah. He had, he had less Bechira. Right. A kid has less Bechira. It's an emotional thrill of uh, finishing Shas when you're young without the eight Sahara. It's great, and there's very little, uh, you know. Based on external feedback. Right, based on external feedback. Well, that, that, yeah, I mean, that, yeah. that's what we're saying. It has to be, because you don't have to yeah. get so hard. Or you and the, the, yeah. the kid's motivation is based off of so many people are going to be proud of him. Yeah. And impressed with him. Who, who, who's, who's the big, uh, the big rubber finish out for? Uh, Lots of them. Right? The art school book. But, yeah. you know, <laughs> is that, but is that, uh, but is that like, so the real question is, yeah, that just shows that they're brilliant. Time. They're brilliant. They're, they're brilliant. That's what it shows. Yeah, it doesn't show more than they're brilliant. Uh, the, but um, how many times they finish us after the Roman? So yeah, the, it's, uh, well, the well, the Meshul Chachmas. Uh, uh, it's a bit of a tangent. It's a bit of a tangent. The Meshul Chachmas Pshat and Bichol Modech and Shema. He says it's uh, and this is a very powerful word which uh, you might be familiar with. Is that uh, it's not so hard to die on Kiddush Hashem. It's much harder to live on Kiddush Hashem. How so? He says, because nobody's going to get up, and no, your wife's not going to get up in the morning. When you get up at 6 or you go dive into a shear and say, wow, what a wonderful person you are. Nobody's coming to you and saying, wow, he went to a shear today, he got up for davening, you know, he went, he's learning dafyomi. It's just, it's, it's, it's drudgery. It's much more difficult. To die in Hashem, okay, you're it's heroic, phenomenal moments, right? And the adrenaline is flowing. Right to, to get, get up in the morning every day for davening doesn't was uh, not heroic. I mean, the, of course, it says first Siv Shulchan Aruch says it's Gaber Kari, but it's you know come on, let's get real. So the so yes, it's much more difficult for and much more praiseworthy if a Kala boss finishes shots than if a young kid finishes shots. Well, lucky you took that in there. Okay. Well, what was my alternative? Just a person, just a stop. <laughs> anybody, but... a person over there. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. No, I, I, no, you show a rav will get. Right. You will get praised for it, right? right. For for finishing shots, right? If I come to you and I say I'm on my tenth time through shots, so you'll say, "Wow, Rabbi Beckoff is a great Talmud Chacham," and it's, but they're not going to say that about uh, other people. No, they won't say it about me. <laughs> yeah, so that's. Uh, it's not yet. So I so I have a Yetzirah. Okay, so the uh, so as he says, uh, he ha- a person has to understand Yasim El Libo. You have to try and under- and get the right perspective. But he says, "Our kings who are tzaddikim or mo tzaddikim are very careful. Shalolei avoli de natila not to come to take it. Vlei anu mi man of cloud. They won't derive any benefit from it all. Leman lo yikul to brishto, so they won't get trapped in its net. For my chacham, we call them sonei matanos yichia. If you hate gifts, you will survive." The Tamu Rabbi, many of the astonished. Simazu Lamu, Echtabi, Dechaim. 
Why do you have to get gifts? And why does hating gifts co- uh, come to uh, bring you life? As far as the person say, "I'm a sofa parakarishon." We mentioned this previously, and we said we're going to explain it. Says, but now I don't have to explain it to you anymore. So I thought this here means that not not that I can't accept the gift, but that I know that <laughs> things I get as a gift are not meaningful. They're not going to give, they, they shouldn't give me true happiness. And if I know that they don't give me true happiness, then I know that if I get too wrapped up in taking gifts, so then I'm never going to be really happy. So that uh, a, a person's all, whole happiness is an accomplishment. This is a very big aside one in um, Victor Frankl, who was a tremendous, uh, with his book, Man's Search for Meaning, is a very powerful book, which was life changing for me. I read it, which about uh, how meaning and happiness only come as a result of accomplishment. So now we're supposed to understand. Sonim Matan Sichim means you have to feel that you're doing the right thing, and that <coughs> means to give overall. Even though a gift might give you momentary pleasure, a person gets wrapped up in gifts is a problem. A person, Sonim Matanos, who doesn't like getting gifts, he's able to have a meaningful life. He doesn't things. say you can't accept gifts. So you should, no, he doesn't say you can't accept yeah, gifts. Because you should hate gifts. Right. You shouldn't like it. Right. So that, the Tachem is all about that Hashem is giving you a gift every second of your life. Well, that's Hashem, yes. And we're going to come that's to Hashem. Different. Yeah, that's it. You hate gifts, should you not be gifted in that either? <laughs> <laughs> you should. It's a leaf neighbor, a little right? <laughs> yeah. So Sometimes, promise it. Tell your wife that on your anniversary. That's what I saw Solanta used to say because of this issue. He says, uh, Yenem's Gashmis is my Ruchnias. In other words, you're right. In theory, I should not, I should not give a gift, but I, I, I have to be concerned with his Gashmis as part of my Ruchnias. No, a lot of people say, though, that, that you know, the real enjoyment should be coming from giving gifts as opposed to receiving, right? Because it should. Giving is much more about pleading than right. giving you. Right, that's in the chain for him in Halloween. <laughs> right? Um, okay, that's... that's uh, uh, no, I think we'll stop here for the other day because it's a new parak, and uh, that was a pretty deep parak. Just start the next parak a little bit. Parak so my 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 course tovo da. It's very important because gra- I had had a had a rosh It was a very very big time chacham, very very big time chacham, amazing time chacham, and I admire him tremendously. Uh, but I, I once said to him, it was early years in kolo. I said to him, you know, I think, uh, one, I forgot what, what one of the other young guys had done. Uh, the Chai, the Chai I said to him, I said, you know, I think you should, maybe it's a good idea. He goes, you should go say thank you to him. And he said to me, he said that with extreme bitterness. Okay, he was very candid. He said, nobody ever said thank you to me. Why should I go say thank you to somebody else? Now, it sounds very coarse, but, you know, in the Chinuch system, that's the way it is. Nobody says thank you to the teachers. And therefore, we develop a set of coarseness. We, uh, are, we don't have Hakar Satov. We become, I'm talking about him right now. It's certainly true in other areas of life. We become cynical, right? We say, there's no reason to be Look, he messed me up yesterday. He's going to mess me up tomorrow. Probably fire me at the end of the year. But the point is, so I'm not going to have no Hakar Satov for these people for that hala, for that board. And so a, a, a person is a very big danger. To, to, to lose a sense of Akar Satov, and it's very easy to be cynical and lose that sense of Akar Satov. And Akar Satov is really, as we're going to see, the basis of our entire avoid in this world. Because if you can't give anything else to somebody, if you're poor beyond relief, if you have no resources, if you don't have anything at, at, <laughs> at your disposal, you still have Akar Satov. And giving Akar Satov, anybody can give on any level. Okay, so that is, uh, how, we'll have to come back to that next week, but Hakar Zatov is the most powerful, powerful uh, thing we can give because it's ubiquitous, it applies everywhere, and it doesn't cost anything. And it's something which changes a person and makes a person a better person. Okay, I'll stop here for today. Should I, uh...